Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the top 10 best ports in the Caribbean. Yes, we're gonna count them <laughs> down for you from 10 to one. So let us know what you think. If you agree, disagree, let us know your top three in the comments as well. Starting off with number 10 though, it's gonna be Nassau. Nassau, the Bahamas, it is one that basically everyone has been to if you've done any amount of cruising <laughs> at all. And it's one that is, there's a lot to do right off the port, which is what I like. There's a lot of shopping, a lot of places you can easily walk to. And sometimes that's what we like to do when we get to Nassau. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where we started when we first went. We've been so many times to Nassau, I lost count now how many times we've been um, but each time we ventured out a little bit farther and a little bit farther from the port itself and from that little shopping area but if you just want to dip your toes in into Nassau when you get there you can just hop right off like Rob said tons of shops and restaurants and places to get you know like fresh coconut and you know just local beverages and things like that and then again as you venture out there are more things to see there are lots of things that you can still walk to but also excursions that you can do but this is one of the ports that definitely you can do a lot of uh, DIY no real need for uh, ship excursions in Nassau because there's so much that you can do on your own um, before you start doing anything uh, through the ship. And Nassau also has one of the best sailaways in the Caribbean, so when you sail away, you're, it's just beautiful. Uh, so I love that about it as well. <laughs> Moving on to number nine, this is gonna be one in Mexico, and that is Costa Maya, Mexico. Yes, Costa Maya, I really like um, it's it kind of like in the same vein as Nassau, but it adds a little bit more when you get off the ship in Costa Maya, although sometimes you have a very long walk depending on <laughs> which pier your ship ports. Uh, you can, once you get to the port itself and walk through, then you have this huge kind of uh, built area from the, the cruise companies. They've built this entire area out. They've got pools and they've got music and fun and shopping and food. There's so much to do there, right? Yeah. You just kind of get drawn in <laughs> really quickly. As soon as you cross that line, you know you're in and there's tons to do right there. So if you've never been and this is your first time to Costa Maya, that's one of the best things to do. There are lots of other excursions to do as well from this port. But again, if this is your first time, I would highly recommend just kind of staying in that area because you're really just going to have such a great time there. Great views and you have access to the beach there as well. So it's a perfect spot for you to just kind of hang out. And number eight is going to be one in Costa Rica, Puerto Limon, Costa Rica. And this was a great one. Uh, I love some of the food options they had because it's not really like tourist food. It's it, You get off and you're right in a real city, which I really do like. And we walked around and picked up some really nice food for pretty cheap. Yeah, and the, the interesting part is that the Caribbean side of Costa Rica is so different than the other side of Costa Rica. Uh, so it just gives you, it's a part that not a lot of people tend to go to unless it's through a cruise and they're at the port there. A lot of people tend to go to the other side of Costa Rica. This side hasn't been like fully developed for tourism uh, per se it's a town where people actually live and like you said you get to try the local food which is mm, so so good um, so make sure you don't eat on the ship I highly recommend skipping breakfast on the ship and eating breakfast as soon as you get off there are several restaurants right um, right off the ship there and oh my goodness the food is just phenomenal of course I have obviously love Spanish food because I am but <laughs> it was so so good and then but you enjoyed the food a lot too didn't you yeah i loved it <laughs> yeah they had like empanadas that you can buy and specialty drinks and this is also a good place there's actually a couple grocery stores too a good spot if you want to pick up snacks to bring back on the ship with you it's a good spot to do that too yeah number seven clocking in here from mexico again one of the really big ports that most people will have been to and we don't generally like these as much uh because they do tend to get really crowded with 
massive amounts of cruise ships there, but this is not going to be Cozumel. Yeah, Cozumel has actually answered the call to all of the ships that port there on what seems like a daily basis. There's at least two or three ships in there for the most part, sometimes more. Um, and there's just so much to do here. This is another one where you don't actually have to enter all the way into Cozumel when you come off of the ship the area that they've built up there is really great they don't have swimming pools in this area um, but they do have a ton of shopping and the restaurants there are really good fabulous fabulous views from here as well um, so if you just wanted to do something like that and that was your first time to Cozumel recommend doing that then you can also, this is actually, Cozumel is a great port to uh, DIY your excursions. You don't really need to book through the ship on these uh, because you're just going to get a better uh, experience. It's going to be way cheaper and you can book actually right from the port when you walk off the ship. Exactly. Uh, number six, San Juan, Puerto Rico. And we had a great time in Puerto Rico because they do drop you off right near the old town for the most part. You can just tour the old town, you can walk to the forts. That's what we chose to do in our last one. We have on other occasions though also done things like the four wheelers, the ATVs, so there's tons of choices for you in San Juan. Yeah, there are tons of things to do. Actually, the last time that we were there, we decided to do something a little bit different and took uh, this walking path to the backside of the port and got to see, uh, of the fort, not the port, <laughs> of the fort and got to see some views that we had never seen before. If you haven't watched that video, check it out here on the channel because it is, we passed very few people. You get to see like, huge iguanas down there so a little bit of wildlife there's a little bit of hiking there as well so it was actually a pretty superb experience number five is going to be saint martin and there's a lot to do in saint martin you can go with a ship tour or you can diy it like we did in our last one we had a great time that's right we used the resort pass app and we wanted to go to one of the resorts we actually wanted to go to the resort that's right next to maho beach which is where the famous beach where the planes basically are landing uh, right there so they go right over you to the airport um, and this resort uh, the morgan resort was right next to the beach area there and you actually had a great unobstructed view without having to fight anybody on the beach or you know all that kind of stuff it was a nice private area the pool was fantastic and the, we had uh, drinks and um, and some lunch there as well and it was a great plate a great way to spend some time we grabbed a taxi at the port took us there and then when we were done at the resort they called us a taxi and took us back to the ship and we had a great time it was perfect Number four is a port that is relatively new to the cruise scene, but we absolutely loved it. There's not actually a ton to do there, but what there is to do is pretty great. So it's going to be Bimini. Yes, and I think Floridians have known about Bimini for a while, but those who have been cruising, it is a newish port to the cruise industry, and it is awesome absolutely loved the swimming there uh the beach is phenomenal if you want to go to just the beach and relax and have a good time this is the place to do it you have a couple of options you can either go the resort path and go sit go to the resort and have fun and you know kind of more music and dancing and all that kind of stuff and a pool and with access to the beach or you could just go straight to the beach and head on down to the end we did do a full video here on the channel about our experience in Bimini we prefer to have more like a private beach <laughs> type experience so um, we went down to the end and had a whole area to ourselves and just had such a great time there and the water is so so clear it's ab absolutely phenomenal it is a great addition to the cruise ports in the Caribbean. Number three is going to be St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands and this is one that we love because you can do your own walking around DIY thing or you can get off and get on a excursion to St. John which is what we did and we went over there and saw Trunk Bay which is one of my favorite places I've ever been. I always wanted to take some pictures there and that was really awesome. 
Uh, and then this last time we went to St. Thomas, we did the DIY walking around. So it's great either way you want to do it. Yeah, it is great. It depends on, you know, what you want to do. But if you stay on the island, there is tons to do right there at St. Thomas. Or if you've been lots of times, you can always just grab a ferry and head on over to St. John or like us on the first time. <laughs> we went over to St. John the first time and then this last time we were there we did the DIY. Either way, you have lots of options. You can stay on St. Thomas and enjoy it or you can enjoy another island that's nearby. Okay, number two is going to be Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic. That's right, and it's actually where my family is from. <laughs> so Puerto Plata is actually great, um, especially if it's the port actually is Puerto Plata, as opposed to if there are if they're in Amber Cove, you have to take about a 45 minute ride in to Puerto Plata from Amber Amber Cove. But if you actually are port ported in Puerto Plata, then it's great because you can walk from the port straight over into Old Town and it is a gorgeous, lots of colorful, beautiful buildings. There's tons to see. There's always some type of street performance and just so much to do there. They have, uh, you know, different types of painted streets, umbrella streets, and of course, the food, you have to have some food when you are in the Dominican Republic. It's absolutely phenomenal, um, if I do say so myself, but you should definitely uh, enjoy your time in Puerto Plata. It's not a ton of cruise ships uh, companies go there, but uh, definitely try to find a cruise that goes here because it's one that I think you will actually really enjoy. And right when you get off the ship there, also there's a huge kind of pool area that you can just stay at. If you don't want to walk into town, uh, you can just use the pools and there's music and food right there. So tons of great things to do. Let us know also, there's some really humorous shops in Puerto Plata. Uh, <laughs> one is called the Dominican Walmart. If you've seen that, let us know in the comments. <laughs> All right, that's going to lead us into our number one port. I'm going to let you call this one out for us. All right, number one for us in the Caribbean is Cartagena, and that is in Colombia. I know, it is absolutely phenomenal. This place has everything. Uh, you're going to want to go here multiple times because you will run out of time before you run out of things to do and things to eat. Uh, Colombia is definitely an underrated uh, destination and Cartagena is perfect. It is so beautiful. The, the arrival into the port is kind of mind-boggling, right? Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful because you can see that little peninsula where all the buildings are and it's so beautiful there and then you look out into the city. You can grab a taxi very easily right there, but before you do that, you end up in this gorgeous kind of uh, tropical rainforest looking place with all of the all of the birds to take pictures with and it's just such a great port right it is a wonderful and the, the food is is phenomenal mm. they have if you like uh, they have a, a, a dish where you, they pile up all kinds of meat with fries <laughs> and all kinds of things on it we get that every time we go there uh, the old town is beautiful lots of great things to take pictures of just walk around and and see what's going on there so just a wonderful city and port too that most people don't get to go to so when we see a cruise that has this port on it it's definitely at the top of our list for booking yeah absolutely and we actually uh, brought your parents with us on this cruise because they actually had never been to Colombia for, before and they loved it so uh, definitely a little something for everybody in Cartagena, Colombia. Guys, what do you think about our list? Our top 10? Uh, would you put Cartagena at the top? Um, let us know down in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time.